World War I saw the first mass use of metal helmets in hundreds of years. The widespread use of artillery meant that helmets were once again a viable means of protection due to their ability to lessen casualties produced by shrapnel. France adopted the Adrian helmet, Germany the Model 1916 or Stahlhelm, and Great Britain the Mark I or Brody helmet. When the United States entered the war in 1917, they purchased a number of Mark I helmets from the British before later producing their own copy of this design. Even though they had just adopted the M1917, the Army had already decided that they wanted a solely American designed and produced helmet that offered greater protection to the back of the head and neck. The man put in charge of the development of a new helmet was Major Bashford Dean of the Ordnance Department. Before he was commissioned as a major, Dean worked for the Arms and Armor Department at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It is easy to see the influence of the medieval helmets he worked with on the helmets he designed for the military. Because he designed so many different prototypes, I just want to point out four of them today and what caused the military to reject them. First, we are going to look at the Model 5. Now right away, you can see that this has a much deeper bowl than the M1917, which caused it to sit much lower on the wearer's head. It was fairly lightweight, offered good protection, and was easy to manufacture. This helmet was the only one that actually made it out of the States and into the trenches of France for further testing. It was ultimately rejected because it was felt that the side profile of the helmet was too similar to the German style helm. Should also be mentioned that the Swiss M18 helmet strongly resembles the Model 5 and it is very possible that it was at least inspired by it. Perhaps the most striking of the experimental helmets were the Model 7 and Model 8. Both look like they came straight out of medieval times complete with a full face visor. The Model 7 was intended to be a sentry helmet and not to be worn for prolonged periods of time. It had two metal cheek pieces on either side of the helmet that could be folded upwards to put it on. The two pieces met in a seam in the middle of the wearer's face. It was heavy and only a few prototypes were made, one of which resides in the Metropolitan Museum. The Model 8 is similar in appearance to the 7, however the visor is only one piece instead of two. It was significantly lighter, but the wearer would still suffer from poor visibility due to the narrow eye slot. This was obviously the better of the two designs, and around 1300 examples were produced, but none saw combat. You will occasionally see these pop up on the collector's market where they command fairly high prices. The last helmet I want to mention is the Liberty Bell helmet. This helmet was not designed by Major Dean like most of the other experimentals, but instead by Major McNary. Several mysteries surround this helmet, including the naming of it. It does not appear to have an official military designation, and if it did, it has been lost to time. There are two possibilities for why it is named the Liberty Bell helmet. The first one simply refers to the vaguely bell-like shape of the helmet, and the second one comes from a magazine article that was written in 1918. In the article, it is mentioned that the helmet had a Liberty Bell design stamped on the front of it. I've heard several people say that there's a possibility the writers of this article were confused, but it is also possible that only very early examples of the helmet had this design, and for a very long time, no known example has existed. Fairly recently, a picture surfaced of a helmet in someone's collection that matches this description, but I have no idea if it is authentic or not, so I will leave that up to you. Fair numbers of this helmet were produced, but it was disliked by troops, mainly because of its shape and it did not last long in service. Finally, it should be mentioned that the World War II British Mark III helmet bears a striking resemblance to the Liberty Bell, and it is possible that the Liberty Bell inspired the British design. As you can tell, none of the helmets that were supposed to replace the M1917 ever caught on. The M1917 was issued well into World War II, and only superseded by the M1 helmet in 1942. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I put out videos like this every week, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you.